Did the government seek legal advice on its decision to disengage with so-called sovereign maroons? And would the government not be derelict in refusing to finance projects in any such territories? And the companion question is um, whether the government um, finds it embarrassing that it seems that different arms of the state, that's the police, and ODPEM, as we found out, um, gave, gave, gave um, approval to the, the hosting of the Maroon celebrations. Your question is based on a very dangerous premise. And I said earlier that there are some threats that the average citizen looking on might think it is innocuous, it is popular, and take a liking to it. Because the discussions that are held in places that should know better does not highlight the threat. Jamaica is a unitary, sovereign state. There is no other sovereign authority in Jamaica other than the government of Jamaica. I want that to be absolutely clear. None. And under my leadership, not one inch of Jamaica will come under any other sovereign authority. What you are asking would be another for the government of Jamaica to fund, take taxpayers' money and grant funds to fund another government. This is not a government saying they are a local government, a parish council government, which is under our constitution. Are you crazy? Really? Do you know what you're asking? This is the stuff of how guerrilla wars come and states break down. Wake up, Jamaica. Don't court foolishness and problems. Wake up. People have died as a result. And you expect me to stand here as prime minister and fund activities that could lead to the breakdown of our state? Never. Thank you. Apologies, are you hearing me? Are we good? Okay. All right, we're ready. All right, so apologies, some technical challenges right there. Um, I would like to again start from the top. In addressing the statements of the Prime Minister earlier today regarding the Maroons and sovereignty, most Jamaicans have really no idea of the true history of the land. And a great deception took place to purposely create division between the hearts and minds of those who reside on this island. The deception goes far back to 1962 under the Bustamante administration with the Siaga led administration as well as the Andrew Honis administration, who are fully aware of the oath that was taken to keep Maroons subservient by crippling their financial capabilities over the last 60 years. Today I will read a letter from the House of Commons, which was entered into the British Parliament on July 6th, 1962, one month before Bustamante, before, one, sorry, one month, one month before Bustamante would have received the charter to have a responsible government from the monarch within the Commonwealth. Nowhere in the charter for Jamaica does it say Jamaica is a unitary sovereign state. I implore Jamaican citizens to do a bit of research with me. Go over the information. 
The Charter and Constitution of Jamaica came after the British monarch signed an agreement with the Maroon government. Now I'm going to read to you this letter from Tom Dryberg, who's a member of Parliament. This letter is dated July 5, 1962 and stamped with an official seal, 19, July 6, 1962, the House of Commons. I would have just posted that letter on, the, on my Instagram page. You could refer to it afterwards, but let me go through word by word. It says, Dear Colonial Secretary, I have from time to time taken an interest in the welfare of the Maroons of Jamaica, who have, as you know, a uniquely fascinating history. Some years ago, I was fortunate enough to be able to visit them in one of their main mountain villages, a compound, and much impressed despite their poverty by their independence of spirit and their determined adherence to the treaty rights which they run from the crown long ago. Can you let me know what their exact position is now and is likely to be in the future? I heard recently from Jamaica that their colonel, as they call their chief man, was planning to lead a delegation to see Sir Alexander Bustamante. I feel certain that if under an independent Jamaica government, they are deprived of their treaty rights and their few thousand acres of land, they would appeal to the British crown to protect them and it seems desirable if possible to avoid a clash, however relatively modest, without a mat with a matter, about a matter which could probably, with good sense, be settled amicably and with regard for the traditions of this proud people. Tom Dryberg, Member of Parliament. In a response to Mr. Dryberg's letter, Mr. Whiteleg wrote, Mr. Dryberg is not asking for intervention, but for information as to the present situation of the Maroons and their future. We have had no indication of any recent change or of any reason to expect that the Jamaica government is planning to refute the treaty on independence, but we should ask and send an interim reply. Now, I would have put these up on my Instagram for you to go and have a look at and take a real deep understand, take a deep breath while you read to try and decipher what it is that is being said in that letter. Now, I recognize that Dr. Lloyd Barnett, who is being relied upon for legal standing on Jamaica's position with the Maroons, states in his constitutional review from his book that the island was terra nullis, which means that there was no one here before the British. This is a highly ignorant statement from a lawyer who should know that indigenous people were here before the crown because we had fought multiple wars before the British Empire. This legal stance that Jamaica government is defending is actually keeping Jamaica from having a republic and keeping it as a responsible government under, under the monarch. The Jamaican government is a profession at begging the world. The, we're selling out our natural resources, we're selling out our lands. These are regular day-to-day -day conversations that permeate the island as the government does not own its roads nor its airspace amongst many other things, which is why Maroons will not subject themselves to a municipality because Mr. Honus and his cronies will try to take our ancestral estate, the cockpit country, and sell it to the highest bidder. If the Jamaican citizens choose not to understand their true history and stop blaming the Maroons as traitors, then the truth will be able to surface for the multitude to see. Today, in, a era, in this era of time, it is globally accepted that nations have a reciprocal, relation, reciprocal relationship as it deals with extradition. So when one reads the treaty, it's not hard to see that Jamaican citizens who were slaves at the time under the British Empire had a choice to join the Maroons under Kodja or his successors and be protected. Those who were fugitives from criminal activities or wanted to disobey the treaty agreement would be returned, similar to how extradition works today. This is Clause 6 of the treaty. There are two types of people on the island. Those who are willing to be righteous at all costs and defend their estate from theft and those who remain as house slaves and gatekeepers for the corruption 
of leaving the Maroons out in 1962. Each person on this island must decide who they are. The world is watching. Our ancestors are watching. The Most High is watching. Therefore, in closing, Mr. Honis, I say this to you. We, the Maroons of cockpit country, descendants of the first people of the archipelago now called Jamaica, would like to remind you of a few things. Jamaica is not a unitary sovereign state. Elizabeth II of House of Windsor is your queen and sovereign. Jamaica is simply fully responsible in Elizabeth's commonwealth. Two, you are a signatory to the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. Please go read this. You are an intelligent man. Jamaica has an extensive external debt and is constantly begging. So you rely on other sovereign nations. In other words, you are receiving funding from others. So please consider human and indigenous rights before you end up defunded as well. Number four. Jamaica, as a government entity, begged for its independence. Whereas the Maroons waged war for 83 years. The war is now over. The right to remit was passed to the government of Jamaica, as the British High Commissioner explained in his speech. Not once, but twice, while you were sitting in front of him. I say this, please, please, let good sense prevail. Do the right thing, and please be guided accordingly. Thank you.